Um, so yeah. the picks and bands are underway. It is going to be alternate versus curse. Alternate starting as the blue side, and Jace being the first band for them, and Rengar and Lee Sin being the first band for curse. Now, a couple of changes with the lineups. Uh, Cyanide is standing in for alternate today uh, because Cotonex or Cotnex or whatever you'd like to call him. Uh, couldn't make it, so Cyanide ah. from Fnatic is standing in. So it's not a bad standing, is it? What was the first ban for Curse? I just missed it. I need to keep up to speed uh, on Lee this. Sin. Gotcha. You need to write Lee Sin ban is a little surprise. Of course I need to write down these bans. Mm -hmm. And Skarna being banned out by Curse as well. So all the jungle has been aimed at here by both teams, really. Hmm. It's a little curious, in all honesty. The Rengar ban, not so surprising. Even though we've seen him not do well in this tournament alone. I think Rengar has kind of been the one successful thing on the losing teams in a lot of these cases. So they're just banning out Rengar, trying to keep out that presence. And it seems like they're just banning out the heavy, just, I don't know, just general junglers. I don't even see a pattern in this. I'm not sure exactly so, what they're going for. being banned out by uh, Alternate, nearly called them Fnatic. Um, it is interesting the fact that those junglers were targeted because it's Cyanide that stepped in. It's not the standard alternate jungler, obviously. So they're either knowing Cyanide really well, knowing what he's probably going to go with, or they're aiming at um, Kerp, maybe. Obviously, we saw Kerp and Kotenex trading places in the top lane and jungle. So how that dynamic is going to work, I guess Kerp will be the top laner. Uh, Sona being the final ban for Curse, and the first insta-lock was Shen. So Shen insta-lock by alternate. So that's, is that something they did yesterday? I can't quite remember, but Shen has been, it's, it's been an off and on thing for this because he's either banned, not picked at all, or just instant locked in the first pick. And it seems like a lot of these teams can't really make up their mind, you know, a consensus. There's some teams that think that Shen is just amazing and then the other teams think that he's just so-so. So I like, like seeing this difference here. I wonder if it's going to pay off for alternate giving Shen the first pick or if Curse has something they can throw up against him in the top lane that makes them regret that pick. Lorian is available, um, should Instinct want it, um, nobody's really going for anything, obviously bearing in mind that, you know, Pharrell and Lord's here, they didn't insta-lock Oriana, which tells yeah, me that... Yeah, that that's happened. really curious. Yeah. So, one thing I did notice before we went in is Pharrell and Lord, in between two days ago and now, is up to 3,030 rating, <laughs> and he's been spamming Ari games, so maybe... Their plan is to get Curse Oriana and then pick Ari against it and try to crush them because they've tried that matchup in the past. It just didn't work out for them. But now, you know, he's went through a bit more practice, you know, getting his rating up to 3,030. And we'll see how that goes for him if that's what ends up happening. Well, Fizz has been picked instead. So Fizz and Nunu being picked up. So extinct wow. on Fizz, Nunu for the support on uh, Super S. Yeah. Um... <laughs> So Nunu, I like, is this very strong pick with the banning out of Sona. They've kind of gotten rid of Nunu's big counter. Alternate will probably go for some kind of poke heavy support. I Now at this point with the Fizz, I'd almost expect them to pick Orianna at some point for Pharrell and Lord. They don't need to do it immediately if they have some other picks they'd like to get to first since Fizz has already been picked in the top lane. The Shen, they almost don't even want to tip their card for that. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they did support an AD. With they these went for two a picks. kill lane, actually. Yeah, support an AD. Uh, so, uh, Graves and Leona. Ah, okay then. <laughs> so, Nunu... Nunu is one of those things that it's going to be a pretty fair, close matchup if they go up against Graves and Leona. The thing is, he does leave himself vulnerable to get initiated on. Every time he wants to try to get up and potentially harass, he'd put himself into Leona initiation range. He is pretty good at protecting his AD carry once they do get initiated on. So that'll be a very high action no sustain lane if they go up against each other. Those are always fun to watch. Yeah, and it's looking like Ash might get selected. No switch to Ezreal. Creaton just waiting to see what he wants to play. Is the discussion going out? And like you mentioned, the fact that there is a kill lane, probably a maneuverability of Ezreal would make sense. And Maluno possibly going to be on Maokai here, I think. Uh, he's got it selected at the moment. I wouldn't be surprised if that gets locked in. Uh, both of those champions. Two seconds left. And yes, they will. No ch no last second switching, so it's going to be Maokai and Ezreal alongside Nunu support and Fizz in the middle. Alright, so the Maokai getting locked in. That the, My only big memory for Maokai this tournament is when I want cookies. Yeah. It was 
Shush? Snowball. Sleuth? Sleuth on Malkai? Shook, wasn't it? Yeah. Shook. Ah, those names. I, I, I try to think it's it's like Shushé, but a little different. Anyway, <laughs> uh, he destroyed Moscow 5 with that. The early ganks for Maokai can be so swingy, and they need to make sure that they pick champions that aren't super vulnerable to that. Right now, they're in pretty good shape. If they were to put Shen up in the top lane, he'd be fairly escapable. They have to be careful with Pharrell and Lord's pick here. Ari is a very strong yep. pick against Maokai. It's there. It's, that... it's, it's highlighted at the moment. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Amumu okay. and Oriana. And Oriana. Aha. Is that highlighted or locked in? It's about to get locked in. One second left. And yes, so it's going to be a Mumu in the jungle. Shen top, Graves Leon at bottom, and Oriana in the middle for Pharrell and Lord. So we'll see how the Oriana goes up against Fizz. With that Fizz getting picked so early, I'm really excited to see what they have planned for. That's pretty much saying that we're going to pick Fizz. It's going to fit into our team comp, and we don't care what you pick against it. They were really... Even though Pharrell and Lord is the highest rating player in the world, it does seem like he has a fairly almost limited champ pool. It's like he'll pick Ari, Oriana, and I haven't seen him on Twisted Fate, but he did play one Gragas game. It's just he doesn't seem like he has the, the largest repertoire. It's like I haven't seen him on Karthus. I haven't seen him on... You know what's just dawned on me? What's that? Angus likes to play AP champions as well. Could that Fizz be top lane? Be Bruiser. It... Mm, it could be. It could be Bruiser. They could be trying to do it up against Shen. That's that's something I remember Diana. Boy Boy did about a year ago. Really? Yes. And Diana's Prophet getting locked in. Prophet man Well. Well. Oh, wow. But the game's been dropped. So, does that mean there was a change? Fizz is <laughs> Heimer. <laughs> says extinct. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> That's uh, so that would be I a think very Fizz interesting was meant to be Jax, which is talent. No, oh, come on. No, they're messing with you now. So fizz is Fizz. Fizz is Fizz, and I wonder if Diana's Diana. Wouldn't surprise me that much if it was. The Fizz top lane would actually work fairly well against Shen. He trades damage fairly well. They'd only have to worry about the jungling presence of a Mumu, which is actually fairly weak. They could have picked that Fizz first with the intention of putting him top or mid, depending on the jungle matchup, that would actually be a pretty smart choice for them, because that would give them somewhat of a double assassin, really aggressive damage dive, and then they'd have Nunu and Ezreal in the back, which would be a very, very good protection in him. No one really offers the, the safety that Nunu does to his AD carry. That would be a very nice kind of split team comp. They'd be able to go through Amumu in a sense, try to get onto Oriana, and then still have Ezreal try to deal with the dive of Leon and Shen. That would be a crisp composition for Curse, assuming they can pull off that Fizz top lane, and assuming that that's actually the case. No, it is the case. They're just okay. uh, they're just whizzing through the picks and bans right now. So for Elm Lord on Oriana, Super Ares is going to be on Nunu, Maluna is going to be on Maokai. They're getting locked in Kerp. And is going to be on Shen. So Kerp top lane in. Leona on uh, Leo. Leo from Le Korea is on Leona. So Leo on Leona. It's going to be an easy one. Uh, Ezreal is Kraton. Uh, just waiting for Extinct to pick in. Here's Diana. It hasn't picked it in, which tells me it's having a discussion. Yes, Diana has been locked in. And the final two for alternate will be Graves and Amumu. And there it is. They are both locked in. And the final one for Angish will be Jax locked in. Boo. Boo. The, all the theory is gone. So it's Fizz middle or... No, 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 no Fizz at all. What the... Okay. <laughs> That's... What is the point of doing picks and bans if the... the ah, yeah, okay. The, if the very first pick is not going to be the pick. They probably messaged it immediately to them and then just didn't think Yeah. to tell us. Ooh. It makes more sense. I wanted to see if it, it makes does make sense. a lot of sense. A Jax on versus a Shen, that makes a hell of a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, and it was their first pick. But nevertheless, I'm excited to see Pharrell Lord on Oriana again because he was amazing on it the other day. It was really impressive to watch and whether they have something to shut down that because I, I see banning Lisa and Skarner and Sona but I can't think 
that any of those bands would be more important than getting Pharrell Nord off of Oriana. It's one of those things... I mean, we as spectators are kind of trained to just say, like, oh, there's no way they're giving them Oriana again. Oh, there's no way we're going to see Oriana in competitive again. And it's just, oh, every time it just continually gets through. And now I get to see the picks, yay. But, uh, yeah, I wonder how long and how many more times these teams are going to have to lose to Oriana well, to realize, realize that the they banning. should stop getting it through. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so what do you want to look at? Let's have a look through some of these teams. Uh... Yeah, let's go for Pharrell and Lord. Oriana. Obviously, his Oriana play is more important than his setup, but let's take a look at his runes. 15 ability power from the Quince. He's actually got AP per yellow on... AP per level on his yellows. Magic resist flat blues and magic pen red. So really doesn't care about the armor going against Diana, knowing that the things that are ganking him are Maokai and Diana, and he's probably not planning on trading that many creep hits, so he doesn't care about the armor. Looking at his masteries, 21 offense, 9 utility, no defense spec at all, so making sure to get the move speed from swiftness as opposed to the mana regen in his utility spec, so fairly standard for him. He does seem to like going more full AP than some of the other mids, which will go more into defensive spec. Let's take a look at Extinct, who's going to be going up against him on Diana. His runes and masteries, also the ability power quintessences, except he has armor yellows, magic pen reds, and magic resist at 18 blues. So straight off the bat, he will have less magic resist, but once he gets around, I believe the breakpoint is level 9. He will have more from there. Let's look at his masteries. Here we go. Here's something unique. 10 offense, 11 defense, and 9 into utility. So he's only specced up to the magic penetration. He's made sure to get the armor and magic resist and veteran scars. And then he's gone move speed and runic affinity as well. So that setup is telling me that he's going for more of a slightly tanky Diana build, making sure he gets the, as much health, as much armor and MR as he can from his runes and masteries. So he's probably going to be going that Abyssal Scepter. He's got two defeats on uh, Diana in his history. Zanya's. <laughs> yeah, he does. Two, I mean, can't quit. you got to keep going. He actually likes the Athenes on Holy Grail on Diana, which is surprising. I'd expect him to do the Abyssal Scepter Zanya's Hourglass. But to each his own, I suppose. We've got about 40 seconds left. Let's take a look at the top lane. That's where you usually see the most counter runing. Kerp on Shen, his runes, move speed quince, 8.8 .8 physical damage. 11 magic resist and 13 armor, so fairly standard. Let's look at his masteries. 9, 15, 6. Really, a lot of split masteries here. He's got the 9 in offense for armor penetration. He's gone all the way up to the initiator master for move speed. And then he specs 6 in utility for actually good hands, the reduced death timer mastery and swiftness. Good hands, extremely underrated mastery. We've got 10 seconds left. Let's go to Angus. Really quick. Runes and masteries. Runes, very standard. Health regen quints. Nope. AD, magic resist and armor. And then masteries is 19, 11. Even though you didn't see it, we know what 1911 Masteries look like, and we know what Health Regen, Quince, Physical Damage, Armor, and Magic Resist look like as well. So not any big counter-building there. Surprising number of tri-spec Masteries, I'd have to say, across the ones we looked at, but still, nothing mind-blowing. Jax with some Health Regen to go up with the Shenpoke, and really the defensive Diana versus the full AP Oriana in mid will be the things to watch for. So, my game client's having its usual fun times and uh, decided to put itself in the corner. It's a, it's a fun bug. Fun bug you get from streaming now and again. Yeah, well, it'll fix. It'll it, it will fix, eventually. Soon. Soon. <laughs> Soon. Uh, we're just waiting for the game to load. So, if you just joined us, this is game one. I will need to... Uh, well, I mean, let's, let's do me client. You can see it. Look at it. Oh, it's kind of like off the side. I, c I can figure things while while this is going on. So, as the blue team is going to be alternate, I'll do ATN. And it is going to be zero. <clears throat> so, you have to, do the, have to do the producer part while we go. We don't have no TV trucks, no expensive uh, people in tow to do all this for us. We have to uh, go as we... As long as we are, let's put EU, shall we? Just to so people don't get confused between Curse NA and Curse EU. That looks horrendous. That's going over the top there. I can't move it. I broke it. I'm broken it. What? Man, come on, producer D-Man. Oh, you can do no. better than this. What? 
I'm such a disappointment to myself and, <laughs> and everyone at home. What is it doing? Why is it not moving? Why can't I move it? Either way, I'll, I'll, I'll talk through maybe the team comps a bit while you're producing things so we get a more entertaining experience. Let me make it better. The, the well, thing my, here is... It's not loaded <laughs> anyway, so there you go. I can move it now. Make the screen bigger. Cool. <laughs> it seems like a pattern between when we get to see a Moomoo is when we see Maokai on the other side. It's one of those... Both those junglers are fairly vulnerable to counter-jungling and fairly blue-reliant, so... Teams only seem to feel safe picking them against one another. Of course, Maluna will have the early, should have the early gank advantage with that new haunted Maokai skin. Hmm. And sign it up. Hasn't moved. moved. Well, nope. Yep. Pause. And extinct. We shall see. It's a D-face coming out. The delays. Stop delaying, please. There's only a few spams. They should get should get this resolved fairly quickly, but we're in the game. Eight of the ten players have bought, because eight of the ten players seem to have voted in. Um, both the AD carries actually having heal. Seems to be a bit of a transition back to that. There was a moment where a lot of them were starting to bring Unite, but at least in this tournament alone, a lot of them are starting to bring heal again. Bit of a disruption. There's no exhausts in this entire game, which is kind of surprising and very good for Angus. Because when he dives in, one of the big things you do is just exhaust Jax. Can't do that anymore. And the pause is coming off. We shall see what happens here. Um, please be back. Are we good? No, Metal Ex is still not moving or doing buying or anything. Oh, well, no, he's alive. He's alive. Aha! There's life in the fixed. Riot Metal Ex yet. And he's bought as well. He's nearly forgot. Started walking away. And his panic and his last minute panic. So, we saw in the previous games very much defensive setups. We saw the first game was a crazy, crazy kill lane. And as it stands, I think we might see a little bit more of a defensive standoff here. Looks like that is going to be the opener. They're actually just giving each other vision in the mid lane, spamming emotes at each other. That gives a tip off that nothing much is happening. Not even getting harassing onto each other. There are pings going down. It looks like. Alternate might be doing those double golems. We might see some kind of delayed invade into the wraiths, but Cyanide doing his best to make sure none of this goes off. These teams actually quite hard to initiate on each other at level 1. There's no hard CC going out, especially considering Maluno has bought his sapling toss right off the bat. So, you know, interesting actually here. Maluno, even though we didn't get to see his masteries, you can tell he's specced in the utility because he started the game with boots and four health potions. So those are going to be slightly different Maokai Masteries. Getting to start the jungle with boots should be fairly good for his ganking. And standard jungle starts. Oh, actually, double golem harassment going down. Double golem harassment is going down. Leo Fukuri is going to come across. Here is Pharrell and Lord. He puts the Ignite down on Super S. Now they're going to try and turn it. They're trying to continue on Super S. They want to get first blood down. Will they manage to finish oh. it off? Yes, they will. Pharrell and Lord, last second hit. Managed to get through, but flashes were burned across many members of uh, Alternate and Curse there. But it's one, you know, when it works, it works. And for Elnord is immediately go back and buy. Yeah, and that's a tough start. That's one of the reasons it is very dangerous to disrupt the double golems. You don't want to let them get that early level two. But if it ends up costing you like that, that's going to be pure disaster. Creatine actually denied about half a wave there, also giving up the assist gold to both Metal X and Leo from Korea. Only thing there for Pharrell and Lord is he's picked up the early Null Magic and sacrificed the level 2, so he will be very defensive play early on here since he has a gold advantage but not an XP advantage. And that means Extinct is going to get to shovel up that lane pretty much at will until Pharrell and Lord gets some of that XP back. Yeah, and Kerp also took a lot of damage. I didn't see whether... Um, wow, well, I obviously know that it's Angus that jumps on him, and again he jumps back on him. Isn't going to be able to land that counter strike. Yes, he does, but he was too close to the turret to go be worried too much about it, but Kerp is definitely going to be forced back. So let's go through the lanes, starting off for this song. Shen versus Jax. So very early, Angus has spent a lot of mana to get Kerp pushed back. It's going to be kind of hard to continue to harass him. He's burned through all three of Kerb's health potions, but he's also burned through Whoa, the bottom majority lane, of his bottom pentacles. Lane again. Bottom lane. Getting oh. taken very low. Well, this is the problem when, it's, when it is uh, Leona there. Leo from Korea, very, very aggressive stuff, trying to get the damage on Korea. And Super S stuck around this time and didn't take the damage. Going to be a feisty one, this bottom lane. 
So he, pretty much that top lane is going to be Curb Turtling Angus for a while until the mana runs out. Maokai and Amumu countering each other. They have full vision over themselves, making that mid lane very difficult to gank. Neither of them chasing down each other. And really that bottom lane, which has already given the assist to Graves and Leona, is going to be a very aggressive lane. Any harass, any poke that goes down is not going to be healed up, especially early before the AD carries get on their lifesteal. So that's going to be a huge amount of action. And we actually see some counter juggling coming in from Maluno right now. Yeah, Maluno comes around, diving on towards Sinai, trying to cause the problem, but obviously there is Pharrell and Lord immediately. Jax had also come down, so the pings had already gone down. They knew that he was in the neighborhood. And uh, moving on towards this mid lane, Pharrell and Lord obviously picked up that first blood. Ooh, hello. Extinct is going looking towards Cyanide. Cyanide is just going to clear out that, immediately putting that defensive ball. The ball control continuing from Ferelnor. Ferelnor went back and he bought a start of Mercury Treads. Went for that normal magic mantle. And there's been so much attempted pressure on Cyanide to shut down his Mumu, but that was the second invade. Both times they've actually taken solo laners away from their experience to try to shut him down, and it's failed both times. And here we see the gank from Maluno, but it's countered perfectly by Cyanide and he backs them off, so the early gank advantage that Maluno is supposed to have isn't working out because the invades haven't worked and the ganks have been countered by Mumu, so this is a early advantage for alternate. Despite the first blood, the gold is almost cut off, caught up. I still think, though, that the jungle playoff is working out for them. Yeah, bottom lane there, Kreaton. He's trying to back. He tried to do it in the first oh, push. Mid. mid as well. It's going to mid. I can see it going towards Maluna. Maluna will go down. That's for Lord that picks it up again. And Extinct is forced to back away. Is he going to get taken now? For has got a massive wave. He does manage to catch it once, but he's going to take a tower damage. The tower here comes in. The ignite oh. enough. Extinct picks up the kill, and Cyanide can't finish the job on towards Extinct. Just that aggression was a little bit too much. Oh, and the double buffs going down on Pharrell and Lord. That was good at turn the lane. Oh, bottom, they're going for Creighton. Bottom, they are diving in. Creighton again with the Ignite running. They're continuing on towards Super S. This has been a very much a back and forth on this bottom lane. Leo oh, from man. Korea going for it. And the mid lane going in again. Cyanide's going to get dropped by Extinct. And Extinct manages to turn around two dives on the turret. Wow. That just the mistakes coming out at this level already. And now I'm seeing Shen incredibly low as well on that top lane. These are very low. These have been beaten on each other. And a lot of that was Extinct actually playing extremely well. The kill on Amumu was actually Amumu trying to bandage in. He juked it, but the bandage hit the minion behind him. So then oh. he caught him in the turret with his Moonfall E vacuum. And he just stuck him there and picked up another kill since he did have... The double buffs from the Pharrell and Lord kill really just oh, capitalizing good. on the tiniest of mistakes from alternate. Now we see Maluno and Cyanide coming up top, all trying to collapse down on a curb, but we could see another turnaround from Cyanide yeah, he's here. Yeah, the twisted advance in there, and Cyanide came in just at the right time because Kerp was a dead man. He's going to put a lot of damage down on towards Maluna there. Maluna's going to get taunted out. He might get taken out. Cyanide damage coming through, but Angus is just going to force him away. Kerp stayed in that top lane. He was in the brush, and the ward went the split second as... Uh, Maluno came into vision range, so he didn't get to see him just as they went through, walked straight through. Just looking the pinks on towards Extinct as well. Extinct is waiting for Oriana to come around and have a look. Well, Oriana with the ball scout perfectly on the wraiths, making it so Extinct wanted to steal those that big blue wraith, but was not feeling safe despite having full vision. I think he's being a little more cautious with those double buffs than Pharrell and Lord was since, of course, Oriana tower dove the instant she had them and gave them up, and that has cost her fairly dearly. Despite getting the first blood, Pharrell and Lord has fallen back pretty heavily in this lane. It's barely hit level 6, whereas Extinct is a third of the way towards level 8, continuing to keep this lane shoved up. Sees Cyanide in that ward, and the level 5 Cyanide has done a great job of counter-junking Maluno thus far in the game, but because of those overdives on Extinct has really let it all go to waste. This is a lot of pressure that Curse is now putting back on to alternate. So they went for the, uh, the items early on. For Elnold went up to the Chalice. He's going to go to Athenes. I think you might have mentioned that. And the blasting one came out. Ooh, I'm looking at the top again. Another bit back and forward. The counter strike coming out. Missing this time from Angus. And Kerb goes straight back at him. And this is definitely going to be a right through back and forth battle for the next few levels. We're up to level 6. So ultimates are going to start coming out. Stan United available. So possibly may see some sort of four-man dive on the bottom, which you tend to get with Shen. And Angus is doing his best to keep Kerp at a low level of health to stop those dives from coming. So unless Kerp goes back to base to heal up, 
that gank that he'll throw at them will not be nearly as potent. There's been a lot of low members in that top lane, but because so many ganks have been attributed up top, we haven't seen much. And Angus actually dives on the curve, throws the ignite off. Got Taunted in the turret, though, and trades back a lot of health themselves. There's been so much aggression in all of these lanes. It's very surprising to see so early. 2-2 so the score at the moment. Kerp's going to clear out that wave. Bottom lane is being shoved up once again. And it's Metalex and Leo from Korea again back on their turret. Let's have a look and let's line the uh, scoreboard. Actually, yeah, I haven't done that. Apologies for that. That was something I tend to do straight away, but I've kind of forgotten. Um, we just sort that back out. There we go. So you can see that 77 to 63, bottom lane supports. Obviously, you wouldn't expect any gold between those two. But the mid lane, as you would expect, two for zero. And the gold advantage, 2,900, 300 gold advantage. Because for Eleanor, despite getting first blood, has been killed on that turret. And the two top, top lane is actually very even. And Shen has kept up with Jax. But, you know, we always know that Jax is going to come a problem later game. Somewhat of a ticking time bomb in that top lane. And I'm surprised a little bit by how much... Crazy attention is getting paid to this mid lane. Cyanide seems to live there. He's getting spotted by the wards, but that is just sucking Maluno's attention there as well, which is kind of what's enabling the bottom lane and the top lane to trade so much damage because they continually have vision of the junglers in that middle lane, and it just lets them know they are very isolated. And here comes Leona and Creighton right into each other. Going straight for it, Creighton surely going to get dropped, Trisha Brass goes off, there goes Creighton going down, Super has may well go down as well, Metalex is going to go in, there's Kerb, joins the party, Stan United, oh, Metalex is going to try and finish that one off, nearly got dropped, but he does pick up the double kill, that's going to give them the big advantage, the big switch they needed, and it's given them a four, 500 gold advantage, they're going to try and turn it into a dragon as well, they've got to be careful, Maluno is coming around here, and you also got Extinct heading down through the jungle. Not too sure whether he's going to get there in time. Meluno's got that ward in place. You can see Leo from Korea just going to try and shepherd him away. Keep him off this one. And yes, there it is. Now will Leo come from Korea turn into a stun? Be wise to back off. And there's Extinct. Is Extinct going to go for it? No. They no. will all back off. And well, will Angus be able to turn this into a tower? I'm not sure he will. Even if he doesn't turn it into a tower, he's gained a lot out of that. Chen creating more for his team, but every time you leave that top lane, especially with someone who pushes as hard as Jax, you give up a lot. And we said he might not get that turret, but that's just how fast Jax pushes turrets. He's actually going to tank a few hits and make sure he gets this. So they successfully traded the dragon for the top turret. The only bad thing about that is they got the double kill onto Metalix. So alternate with the Chen gank pulls out a small advantage, but Angish doing his best to make sure it gets somewhat neutralized. And as Joe Miller said, there's nothing more satisfying than hearing a Jax beating on a turret. It's definitely true. The middle lane actually having a little bit of a poke back and forth here. Extinct getting very aggressive on Pharrell Lord. Maybe he knows that his Diana can beat Pharrell Lord's Ariana. Interesting matchup between the two at the moment. Certainly seems to have got the better of him after, after the, uh, the fact that he did have that two great defensive kills. Let's have a look towards the bottom lane. They've both returned to the lane. BF Sword being picked up fairly early by Metalex there, along with the Ninja Tabby, something that a lot of teams have been running. There's Leo from Korea catching up towards Kratos. Arcane shifts out of the ultimate, though, but Super S now going to get stunned up. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, there is a fight going down. That's happened. Then that's going to be Super S. Super S will get dropped eventually here. It's going to take a little bit of killing, and eventually they do give it off to Metalex. I'm going to get a rewind on that one because it looked like that was a straight-up Oriana fight. I did mention the fact it was, yeah, there we go. Jungler comes in, tried to use his Shockwave, was never enough. And that was a clean, clean kill from Extinct. And I will try and jump to life. Oh, don't jump in. let me... Don't jump. I'm going to go back again. <laughs> yeah, keep playing. Uh, Catch that last kill. Yeah, we saw what happened. It's going to be a dive on towards Ezreal on this bottom jungle. There we go. You can see and that's going to be the ultimate use there. Sad Mummy was used, but, you know, the, how, when it works, it works. And Metalex picks up another kill. And now we're going to see Maluno's heading down to the south. I don't think he's going to be able to do anything about this tower going down going to come in, toss a couple of saplings out, but he's got to be careful he doesn't get caught. Meanwhile, the mid turret is continually being pushed, and there's a lot of damage on that mid turret, and that's going to be Extinct going in. Shockwave used on towards Pharrell Lord there. Extinct might be able to get away from this one. So, sorry, it's Pharrell Lord using the Shockwave. Does manage to get the attack ball onto Extinct. Extinct is going to back away. Those last few hits are not going to be enough. He's going to walk away with 200 health, and well, Extinct is doing a fantastic job in that mid lane. Look how much he's shredded off that mid turret. And I think it's now safe after a flurry of action to jump back to live. Let's take a recap at what all these last few kills mean. Sunfire Cape 
rushing out onto Shen, so that's going to be a nice big power spike for him in the interim. The Bloodthirster being completed onto Metal X as well. That's giving them a big edge in the lane. Both AD carries now getting to Ninja Tabby. This has kind of been an evolution throughout the tournament. It's been a couple of them. Seems like the Ninja Tabby AD carry always wins, and now everyone is going Ninja Tabby on the AD carries. They've taken down a couple turrets here, so it's now two turrets to one. Curse with the slight edge. Almost the third turret. That mid turret taking so much damage from Extinct pushing. And the big thing that's going to be happening next is the carries, at least the soul laners from Curse, have a huge amount of gold. And it's going to be now about whether Extinct can actually dive on to Metal X because Alternate has done a great job every time they gank that bottom lane of making damn sure that Metal X finishes off those kills. Everyone gets away from him and they let him finish him off. So he's getting very, very strong. And now we could see a bit of an invade onto this blue. Can they get it away? Nope. Brelan Lord takes it off. Brelan Lord was quick at that one. They were there though. They could have gone for it. They just weren't quick enough to react to it. And they are going to back away. So, well, uh, explain to... There's going to be a lot of people watching. It explains to them why the this dynamic has changed. Why do they have started picking up the Ninja Tabby rather than, say, your Berserker Greaves, which probably everyone in Solo Queue does go for. Actually, Super oh. has, hold that thought, Super has getting dived on here by Cyanide. He's got the ball on him. He pops the ultimate to go for Super has. Two ultimates used there to kill a support kill. Is that desperation or what? That's just an Owen 3 Nunu. I think they're just generally trying for more map control. They saw the kill. They didn't want it to get away, and they're getting pressured so fast and far that they're kind of taking any kill they can. So they're up seven kills to three, but down in gold, and that just might have been just one of those frustration kills. And when you burn that many ultimates, oh, as Extinct actually goes in in the bottom. Yeah, they're or going Leo. to the top, the bottom as well. Looks like it's going to be Leo going down, uses his ultimate, tries to hit. Stan United as well on towards Leo. He wants to get the stun down. The taunt's going to come across as well. Here comes Metal X and Extinct's gone too deep because Cyanide lands a full range. Stun on him, very nicely played. And well, that's actually left the top turret exposer because you can see Maluna and Ungush are there. And immediately Ferenlaw's trying to back across, trying to get over here. He needs to try and protect this turret. Is he going to be too lonesome though? Gets in there, manages to get the attack distance down. He has got Kerb coming from back around, so Kerb's made some quick ground up. He's also got Cyanide, they're all going to try and cap chain. Here's the speed boost, does manage to go for it, doesn't get the taunt though. Angus flashed away from it, and oh. Leap Strikes out of the danger. Cyanide's going to continue, he's going to have Bandage Toss available. There's the Shockwave ball on top of Cyanide, there's the ultimate go back out there. And he's going to have Bandage Toss once again, will go for it on towards Maluna. No, the stun came out perfectly timed by Angus there. Counter strike onto Cyanide, prevented any more damage. But bottom, we actually see Metalix chasing after Creation with the red buff, and he has another second on his arcane shift. He should be able to escape that. He should be able. He's just going to have to shift in, use the flash, and there's the heal from Creation. And now Extinct's back in, and now Metalix is in trouble. Now he's got nothing. He's just used his flash. He is a dead man. He's going to have Leo from Korea coming to support him, and Extinct has chose to back away from it. Whether it's a wise choice or not, I don't know. With two v ones, always a dangerous thing, despite the fact that you are the highest damage dealer on the map give you a chance to catch your breath here because we yeah. have non-stop action, but no, nope, you're not going to get it because Alternate pushing down middle and Angus coming in from the side cannot quite get the counter strikes done and they may successfully repel that push, but man, these teams are really pressuring each other extremely hard, killing each other, pushing turrets, and constantly it seems like someone's diving a turret or taking damage. Top lane, Maluno going on to Kerb. Yeah, Maluno diving onto Kerb. Kerb wants to actually take this one. Now he's going for the Ignite. This is an Oracle possibly burnt. He's going to be worth diving. He does go down. Is he going to be able to avoid the damage, though? You can see that Jax is making his way up towards the jungle, and he's got to be careful this one, Kerb. He's going to try and duke it out. You can see he's actually going towards them. I think he's just going to, yeah, taunt through. Pulls nice it. Duke. Aggro. Nice duke. And he's managed to avoid the damage. That will have given uh, Angus way. He knows exactly where he is. Actually, if if they'd have covered him off, Extinct would have gone up there, maybe he could have covered him off, but they're going to go for Dragon. Yeah, they did not necessarily have the right communication. We saw that the double golems had aggroed off the Sunfire Cape, so they knew where he was. But now we just see, after all that action, they knew who was up top. The Ezreal was unable to cut through. Alternate successfully taking down a Dragon, so... They're countering this pressure actually fairly well. Everyone on Curse was a little bit overextended, and they got caught out of position quite well. Oriana Amumu doing even Leona a very good job of chasing down, CCing properly, so they're up 9 kills to 3, and they did pick up the dragon, but only up 1,000 gold, so it goes to show that they're really getting almost out-farmed throughout the board, trying to figure out exactly where all that is. 
extinct, 142 to 111 onto Frelim Lord. That's a fairly big chunk. You can also see Angus, 138 to 118 over Jack, so 20 there. Ezreal also up by 24. Really, everyone just minion kill advantages, and that comes when you're split pushing so well because you're making sure all the lanes permanently sh stay shoved, and with all the attention alternates put towards killing them, they're giving up their lanes occasionally. Alternate does have the advantage here despite the pressure from Curse, but we'll see if the pressure eventually breaks them. There you go, Kurt returning to top lane. Got pushed a little bit and Angus was there. Extinct actually pushed the wave in the mid lane as well and stripped a good 300 hit points off the uh, the mid inner turret. Not much left on that one now, just another wave push. There's three man stack on this top turret, so Kurt's going to have some visitors in a minute. There we go, there goes Extinct, pulls him in, manages to taunt dash away and for run look, comes in at the right time, lands the shockwave, the defensive ball was on him but it wasn't quite enough and now Angus might be able to turn into a kill, trying to dive on towards Pharrell and doesn't manage to land it and they back away and that's going to be surely the inner turret down, the rest of the team are a long way off here, Pharrell is going to return back to there, try oh, and clear extinct. out the wave very cautiously because Extinct is back on him and forces him away again, Flash used up that to get out of that one. Namumu coming around the side. Sinai could engage, but that turret's going to go down before he gets involved. And now he's put himself in a dangerous position, and Extinct again goes on towards Pharrell Lord. He's trying to control him. Now Sinai comes around. Is it going to be enough? Pops the curse to the sad mommy. Here comes the defensive ball on towards him. Doesn't have Shockwave available. Meanwhile, it's all happening. I'm going to look across the river. They're going to continue on. Stan United on. They're chasing on Kraton. They've already caught down Nunu. Extinct is going to get taken down here by Kerb Sinai. Finally taking that one down. Kraton has just about got away from Metalex and Leo from Korea. And but Luno. they did take down Super As. And where did that one come from? He missed it. Did they dive? He must have dived he in. Yeah, he the turret down. Did he catch him on the turret? No! Nearly caught him on the fountain. The refresh, sorry, from the fountain. 127 hit points ticking up was just about enough. True Shot Barrage wasn't quite enough to take him down on the fountain. I'm going to go out and say this game's a little bit hard to follow <laughs> because action is happening everywhere. There was a kill pick down at the bottom where they initially picked off a support which just made Kreaton run all the way throughout the map. All the while, it was the fight we were following over in the inhibitor. They did take down the one turret, came away with a kill advantage, but after all of that happened, at the end of the day, it's still a 1,000 gold advantage, so no one really garnering too huge of a lead off of that last play. We really have to start looking, though. Metal X, 6 Kirk's and dead. oh, That's going to become a really big problem for them. And Kerp going to finish off that turret. He's dead. Hoping the creeps do it. But this is going to be real tough for him to escape. Yeah, he's not going to escape this one. There's four people closing in. Ferelnold was coming up there, but they've just said, okay, what, what can we take from this? I think they're going to try and take the mid turret. Kerp goes down. You can see Pharrell Lord coming around There's there, but honestly, they've there, not really done a great deal to the mid turret. And then meanwhile, Extinct is going to take the bottom turret, so the advantages in turrets are definitely falling Curse's way, which is why the gold is still so close. 12-5 down in terms of kills. Oh, Metalex might get caught by Extinct there. Ooh, just went for it. Went for it with a skill shot. And while Extinct continues to push. Now, bear in mind, Extinct has done a hell of a lot of damage on that mid turret. He's going to get a big chunk of damage on here. He's got the Siege minion with him. The rest of Alternate are backed away. Alternate, 12-5 up in kills. But as I said, that gold advantage equal across the board because of that 4-2 tower advantage and the yeah. dragon. And this is a really crazy strategy, in a sense, from Curse. The amount of pressure they're applying, because if you were just tuning into this game now and you looked at the scoreline and you saw 0-3 on Maokai, 0-5 on Nunu, 0-2 on Ezreal, you'd think, man, they are getting absolutely crushed, but you look at the gold and it is absolutely dead even. They Don't keep getting good. kicked off, Angus getting dropped in the other lane as well, but they got another turret, so after all this, he did escape actually, after all this, they're just continually pulling ahead, and normally when a team dies this much, they back off in aggression, but Curse is continuing to apply it, and it seems like it might finally be breaking alternate, despite... You can only kill them so many times if you continually lose turrets and you continually get out farmed. You will fall behind and you will lose the game. They have to find a way to stop this and counteract some of the pressure. And the pressure is continuing. And look, they've just they come around and Ferelin Lord's forced to come back. And Ferelin Lord has to deal with this another creep wave. They've got the Siege Mini and creep wave coming in onto the turret. He will defend it successfully. The rest of Fnatic. Oh, he's caught Maluna. Maluna's been caught out there with a bandage toss. He does manage to knock Sign out back because the sad mommy was used. Is it going to be enough though? I think he was a little bit too reckless there because Extinct comes in, catches everyone, pulls them in. They don't have Pharrell and Lord there, so they don't have the damage. They're going to try and take down Extinct, but the absolute zero pops and he takes down Cyanide. Curb's now in trouble. Metal X gets dropped. 
Kirpin's going to get dropped. Creighton will finish that one off. And there we go. It's actually Diana that came in extinct on nothing. Comes in to steal it. And well, they engaged at the wrong point at the wrong time. And they went and lost 4-1 in that exchange. The kills finally turned around. They had applied enough pressure and were strong enough in team fights that they were able to pick that one off. It was a bit of a desperation engage by alternate. You saw Cyanide's alt on Amumu really didn't catch all that much, and then they still fought after it. They may have gotten caught into that thought that they were up 13 kills to 5 and that they would have an advantage in almost any team fight they could catch, but they were wrong. They were at disadvantage going into that team fight. The shutdown onto Metal X is really the biggest thing giving all that gold back onto Kreaton's Ezreal. We look at that now, and it's only 8,600 to 8,300 when you compare Graves to Ezreal. Despite the 6-in-1 start, it just goes to show all the global objectives, all the dragons, all the minions that they've been getting are really paying dividends, and now they're going down for yet another dragon. How is Alternate going to combat this? Because this is an absurd amount of aggression and pressure coming out from Curse, and it's something Alternate doesn't really seem prepared for. They don't uh, keep an extinct at bay, but it, all extinct does is basically keep them away from that dragon. There is the dragon going down. They had no ward placement. They got no vision of it. The only ward they do have down is at the Baron pit, which actually, Curse don't have anything near the Baron at the moment, so they may want to get some wards in there. Let's have a look across the gold across the board. That's how is this working out? You can see Jax is steamrolling ahead of Shen, really. In terms of gold, and they're going to dive, they're going to dive into it, and that's flashed oh. out. The shockwave came out from for an unload, but extinct and flashed out of it. We saw it a lot of yesterday. Uh, now they're going to try and reverse this one. They're trying to dive back onto them. Uh, Creaton is not with them, though, so I wouldn't expect them to go fully aggressive here, Curse, but uh, they are continuing. And you can see for unload is back. Something about up. this strategy for Curse is. Fnatic, or not, I looked at Cyanide and for some reason thought they're Fnatic. Alternate's team is very much about area of effect ultimate. Cyanide comboed with Pharrell and Lord. They really just want to force everyone to be in the same fight so they can affect everyone. So all this split pushing and all this skirmishing by Curse is really throwing them off. Every time they want to get a pick kill, it eats up a cooldown from those ultimates. So Cyanide can get a kill with his Amumu ult. Pharrell and Lord can get a kill with his Oriana ult. But then during the cooldowns, Curse has been pushing objectives. Now the struggle is going to be, since they've taken down pretty much all the outer turrets and only garnered the 3,000 gold advantage, can they win the straight-up 5v5 fights if they get caught in the Mumu ult and an Orianna ult during the same engagement? That's going to be the telling part. I think they have enough, but by no means is alternate actually out of this game since, at the end of the day, you're still going to have to win a team fight against the team fight comp, and you're going to need a pretty big lead before you can do that. Here comes Jax, leaps onto a Pharrell Lord. He has to back off. It's slowed, of course, by distance. And while this is all happening, Kirby's trying to split push. This is what they wanted to do in the first place. They wanted to use Shen to split push, stand united in when needed. But they are going to start setting up Curse. Looks like they want to actually start forcing something here for the Baron. You can see they probably feel they've got the advantage. Despite the fact they're 13-9 down, they have won the last few fights. There you go. Angus going in. They're clearing out the ward placement. And they are going to start things off. How are Curse going to react to this one? Well, Kill this Baron pretty fast. Metalix is too so far away. He's going to try to dive in on this. But Metalix is not there. Shen split pushing. If it's the very best to get a 4v5, they're going to have to go... Curse could have peeled, but they don't realize that Graves isn't with the team. They could have finished it off, but they successfully repel them. At this point, they're going to try to make sure. Here comes the fight. They've kept it at 3,400, and actually it's not regenerated just yet. They're going to dive in. Angus is taking very low, though. But remember, good Angus has got that Guardian Angel. Cyanide is going to get dropped down, and now the Super as is going to pop his ultimate. Absolute zero. Clear from Korea with the Oracle is going to get burned down. Kerp is getting dropped as well. Leo, well, you can see that Angus is just ripping the team apart. Does finally get taken down. It was extinct that gets dropped, but triple kill currently for Angus. And now Angus is chasing on towards Pharrell Lord. Oh, and the slow misses, and he just jumps on. The quadra kill comes out from Angus, and Jax just rips everyone on absolute absolute legends, I nearly called them then. Alternate, a uh, new one, and well, it's just going to pick up the Baron. And that was just a, a total panic fight from Alternate. And that was just the peel. The thing is, you bring it on yourself. When you're split pushing with Shen like that, you're forcing the team to force you to use your ultimate. So they, in a sense, engaged the 4v5. And then it was surprising because Kerp actually took a really long time to jump into that fight. And it allowed Curse to get the split initiation. They zoned out Orianna. They got the Amumu ult from Cyanide, used on only, I believe, Diana. 
And that Baron was pretty close. It didn't matter, though. They were able to take it down. Give Baron to pretty much their... In I think their entire team did end up getting that one when the buff came up. And now they've actually pulled even in kills. They've won the last four, I almost want to say, team fights. They're in pretty commanding control here. Alternate really needs to get a fight on their own terms. And now that all of their outer turrets are pretty much gone and Curse has the Baron buff, they're going to get the fight. It's just a matter of they're pretty far behind at this point. Don't know if they have the oomph in their team comp to do it. Well, Kerp is back to that bottom lane, farming out as much as he can as humanly possible, but honestly, he's so far behind now. He's 2,000 gold behind. Here comes Extinct. Extinct wants to get onto him. And Kerp is already backing off, but Extinct might spot him, and Kerp's realized he's in trouble. And now Angus is also closing in. There you go. Extinct has managed to catch him. He's going to poke back and forward, and Angus is going to close the gap. Kerp is a dead, dead shed. Yep. That little ninja is not going to avoid this one. There goes the stun. There goes the drop. And it's Extinct that picks up the kill. But honestly, it's one of those positions you're just like, what were you doing up there? Just trying to split push once again. Can't get himself out of that mode. Doesn't realize that they have lost complete control of the map here and you can see Angus actually just tanking the turret down here with Extinct taking down the sixth turret of the game now all the outers have been cleared they still have 20 second death timer on Kerp so they might look to initiate slash dive this is where they actually have to be a little bit careful it's very hard to dive a turret through an Amumu ult and Pharrell and Lord can throw out substantial amounts of good shields here they're going to try to poke it onto this turret. They do have a large item advantage. They still have the Baron buff. Let's see if they can turn it into an hit. They're going aggressive. They're going to dive. They can see they've already shredded half the hill clan. There's the curse of the sad mommy. Is it going to be enough? There's the shockwave. Pulls them in. Actually, it wasn't the shockwave, I don't believe. It was this, this time it was the shockwave. It was actually uh, extinct. They used it to start with. They do take the turret down, but you can see the hit points were taken very low. But the combos were not enough. They kept them away from the inhibitor. But they did lose out, and you can see actually Kraton may get caught out here. Kraton has to arcane flash through. That was the clutch, clutch move. Didn't use his flash, oh. but does get dropped by the Ignite, I think it was, from Kerp there. And that will be the last of him. So, bottom turret taken down. Middle inhibitor turret taken down. And oh, and Extinct's going to come back around. He's going to pop the Guardian Angel on Metalix, and Metalix needs help. Nobody's moving to help him. Kerp has finally just realized now Kerp is heading down there. The Guardian Angel's popped. Is he going to stick around? Doesn't manage to land it. Uses the ultimate at the wrong time. He's going to get caught. He's going to get a bandage shot. There's for Lord. They're going to be able to get onto Extinct. Going to pop the Baron ultimate here. He turns around. He's trying to go for Metalex. And Metalex will turn back around. Cyanide picks up the kill. And that was a little bit of greed we've seen from Extinct. Yep. Extinct overstaying his welcome. Popping the GA should have easily been enough. There's no way that an alternate does not come down to defend during that long Guardian Angel revive time. Bit of a comeback may be there. The problem with that is the barrier has somewhat been broken. Normally it's really good to hold on that inhibitor turret, but now that, that mid inhibitor turret is down, it seems like Curse should be well, able Lord's to walk jumped on. take that. He's gonna get dropped, the Maloon has dived into him, that's gonna be the ultimate, you can see it's Angus is all over them, Trisha Paraz comes back across, and they just leap away, while it's all happening, Superaz is just soloing that dragon. That's, a, that's the ultimate support right there. <laughs> Supporting the team with global gold gain, they're gonna have to wait for Extinct to get revived here, and he did end up going with that Abyssal Scepter, Zhonya's Hourglass, Diana build looks like he's probably going towards a Guardian Angel next, so he's actually going for a very almost bruiser build for Diana in that assassin role. It's kind of needed when you're diving in through an Amumu and onto an Orianna. There's lots of AoE. Getting back actually to that fight where they had the Baron buff and they dove the turret to get that inhibitor tower. It was pretty much the best fight alternate could have asked for. Cyanide land is all onto pretty much everyone and the shockwave from Pharrell Lord hit four and grouped them all up and even with that they still didn't get a kill at all with the clean they've now lost their red buff I think what Curse is going to do at this point is kind of pass a farm a little bit until they can get the next Baron buff and then look to shove and maybe end they're in a pretty commanding position here the pressure has mainly been applied this has been a very high kill aggressive game really Jax hitting that crazy moment where he has a Gunblade and a Trinity Force and a Guardian Angel. I don't know if Alternate has the damage to just get through all those resists and all that Spellvamp and Lifesteal, so it's very, 
very tricky waters here for alternate if they want to stay in this game. Yeah, it's, it's a scary moment. Once Jax gets this, this strong and this fed, 5-0-3, that's just like your ultimate nightmare. And there's not a lot you can do to stop him. And honestly, you haven't really got the damage, the burst, the, the, the capabilities. They've got no Last Whisper yet on, uh, on, on Metal X. So he hasn't been able to get that armor pen, get past the Guardian Angels, and just the, the sheer burst that they require to drop him so quick. And even with Pharrell Lord's help, I don't think they're going to be able to do it. Got to be careful Super Superaz doesn't get caught out. The rest of the team are split away a little bit from Jax at the moment. Jax is continuing to push that top lane. Extinct is not with them either. And yeah, I'm about to say, Kratos and having to Arcane shift away from that. Make sure he doesn't get caught in the shockwave. Doesn't get dropped while they're in a 3v5 situation. And here comes Angush. Angus getting the poke on him now. And Kerb going aggressive. They need to try and drop Angus as much as they humanly can. Poking in there. Cyanide going aggressive there. Didn't use Curse of the Sad Mommy. Realized the situation. Didn't call for it. And just backed away. Clever, clever play there from Cyanide. They are going to continue. Now they're going for it. Now they're going for Cyanide. There's Curse of the Sad Mommy. There's the Shockwave. Absolute Zero coming out as well. And Extinct is jumping around the team. Cyanide's getting taken out very low. That's going to be for Elnor dropped. Uh, Metal X is getting dropped. Drop, sorry. For Elnor's just off the side. He is the last stand in person. Angus just managed to get on towards Kerb. Kerb goes down. And that's going to be the inhibitor dropped. And a five-man curse, I think, are just going to be able to romp their way through this one. Kraton actually tanking up both turrets there. Kraton with that Guardian Angels. Does manage to go through. There's the life wow. steal from the Panthers. <laughs> and just zips through. And well, for Elnor dropped. Curse take game one, and what a successful game. The fact that they were so far behind in kills did not matter to them. They were so aggressive in their poke. That was just a good strategy, realizing, realizing exactly what they needed to do to finish 